in Iran. But can I just ask you to tell us which groups of people or uh, who who are being punished in Iran? I know you said a little bit about journalists, but are there other minority groups or civil society actors who's kind of who's facing the deepest consequence? Mm -hmm. um, basically, any uh, civic slash political activist, you don't have to necessarily be advocating about a political issue because everything is political in a totalitarian state like Iran. So you could be a lawyer defending workers' rights, factory workers who haven't received their pensions, And all of a sudden you're charged with this broad, uh, overbroad charge of conspiring against the regime, quote unquote. So anyone who is deemed to have done something against national security, which is defined very, very, very broadly, basically anyone who expresses an opinion or does something that the regime sees as threatening in any way could be subject to arbitrary detention and arrest. Groups that are specially targeted other than human rights activists, bloggers, journalists, and lawyers are ethnic and religious minorities. It's basically a political issue, identity itself in Iran. And if you're part of a minority and you talk about your civil and political rights or your cultural rights, you're making a political statement because the regime has chosen to not acknowledge you. And it, it has made systematic decisions to silence you and it knows that. So. Uh, people who are not Muslim, um, or even people who are not Shia Muslim, Sunni Muslim, the Baha'i people have faced enormous uh, suppression, execution, detention, not able to continue uh, their education. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same goes with all other minorities, Kurdish people uh, have faced severe backlash. People from the Turkish background have faced significant backlash. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a, an ongoing list that doesn't end. Uh, and as you mentioned, LGBTQ activists are absolutely a target because uh, Ahmadinejad, the former president, said, quote unquote, we don't have gay people in Iran. So uh, when a government stand by something like that, then what can it do but to suppress any voices that acknowledge that that isn't the case and that there are systematic issues happening with LGBTQ people and their right to uh, so many things, not just gender expression, but just freedom of speech in general to, leave, to live within their gender identity to mm, interact with the world the way they want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be a very long road until there's any concession. Uh, the LGBTQ rights are very important, but at the same time, there's so much happening in Iran to suppress everyone that unfortunately, I believe that'll be one of the things that happens later rather than, rather than sooner in terms of improving that. Yeah, that's so devastating to think about. So for what I saw for LGBTQI rights were that state endorsed conversion therapies, which include torture and other ill treatment, including Absolutely. with children. Um, they seek, um, if you seek a gender change, instead you might become sterilized. They might do a surgery to sterilize mm -hmm. you. Military characterizes LGBT community, community as perversion. Um, Absolutely. So in terms of the gay conversion therapy and people who identify with a certain gender of what the Iranian uh, regime uh, does, it only acknowledges LGBTQ uh, people in terms of them being deviant and them needing medical intervention. No other way. So uh, if you identify as gay, you can't be in the military because you suffer from perversion. Right. And the only way, uh, the only thing to be done about something like this is 
medical and uh, obviously it's uh, carried out uh, there's lots of issues with what's happening and sterilization 